Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandar, Principal Scientist at ICR Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Ijat Nagar in Uttar Pradesh. I will be talking about opportunities of entrepreneurship for startups in organic farming. As you know, organic farming is an emerging system of agriculture production system and what which is expanding worldwide in a very faster rate. Growth is very fast in organic sector and many people are coming forward to consume organic products. So, there are very good prospects of organic production and marketing. So, many graduates, young graduates, youth, they are, they are look for these government jobs for safe and safe uh, living and then they do not want to take risk. But now jobs, government jobs are slowly, slowly getting reduced and now there is not much choices but to get into business. So, they have to think multiple ways of getting into business and how they can start up their business in agriculture sector. It is a very promising area where they can get involved themselves. Agriculture production in general they can take, take up as a uh, on entrepreneurship mode by giving value addition and by processing the product and marketing in a, in a innovative and creative ways. Same product can be sold as a raw product without processing but if you process your profit can be multifold. So, we have to see that how we can earn more from the business uh, when we take agriculture as a business activity. So, I am taking up example of organic farming how a startup can take up different ventures in, in the field of organic farming. So, how it can be done. So, they take up the uh, look at the example of this particular uh, livestock producer. So, he retired from the government service or he was an air force officer. After retirement, he thought that do something related to dairying. So, dairying he was not interested to do con conventional dairy wherein some animals are kept and the, as usual milk is sold in a conventional way as many dairy operators do it, but he wanted to do it in a very different way, a little bit different way. So, at that time the concept of A1 and A2 milk was new. He thought he should start with selling A2 milk and then, so he thought that he, he should do start and take up organic dairy dairying also. So, he needed uh, some technical advice. He got in touch with the National Ag Academy of Agriculture Research Management. So, where and, uh, there was one agribusiness incubation cell. So, he got in touch with them for the technical advice. So, whenever you start any new business, you need lot of technical advice how to do it. It was he was the first generation dairy farmer, unlike the very traditional dairy farmers, he was a new to it. He needed lot of technical advice how to do dairy farming, even conventional dairy farming he was not much aware about. So, he started, he started doing it and took the help of the agribusiness incubator of the National Academy of Agriculture Research Management. It is one of the ICR institutes based in Hyderabad. So, likewise farmers and youth need support from extension and advice services to start a new venture. So, daring and organ daring is a some catchy idea, it is a new idea, it is a fresh idea and one, one can invest his resources, his or her resources into this venture to get profit. What is what he did? He started with a small dairy with the 30 cows keeping indigenous cows. So, he could have also kept exotic breeds, but he thought that being well adapted to the local environment, the local cattle, they see indigenous breeds will do better. So, he then and then he started and contacting the consumers. He also developed some kind of uh, publicity material for his dairy like this poster. So, he named his just like uh, private companies, they name uh, brand name their product. So, they, they will say, so likewise dairy farmers are also dairy farmers or other farmers now, those who are innovative and they are business oriented, they also giving brand name to their farms. Likewise, he also gave named Saro Fresh Organic Milk. That attracts the attention of the consumers. The moment they hear that it is organic milk, they get attracted to it. 
do they, it draws consumers towards the dairy and then he introduced the concept that he is selling pure healthy safe milk and then it is then he it is very safe and it is produced by following the organic standards so and he was having a dedicated customer base who are buying him buying from him regularly milk and he was delivering the certified organic milk to their doorstep so he was he was in touch with the certification agencies and he was in the process of the conversion it was not fully organic because con at that time when i con i was got in touch with him at that time he was in conversion only so it was conversion period is the time when you are declared fully organic in between you are following the standard and procedures for organic farming that is the state called conversion period so usually that is 3 year period when you are growing crops and where you are having perennial crops and you are raising annual crops. So, 3 years it takes just to get the status of organic farmers and then if you are a organic farmer growing crops and if you are maintaining some livestock which are depending on for the feed and fodder from that farm. So, that it takes nearly about 1 year time to convert to after that they are eligible for the certified organic status. So, likewise there are many example throughout the country east, west, north, south everywhere. So, now people are trying to venture into organic system or uh, they are trying to adopt organic practices and they are getting in touch with the certification agencies. They want to sell certified product because the market is growing for the organic certified organic products. So, he is just one I gave example there could be several others. So, for example, another farmer is there he came to my institute for a training on dairy farming. So, but what he got interested what impressed to him that rather than cows only for the milk production why not to get into cow dung business. Because if you look at organic production, so organic production cow dung has a very important role manure, manure to, to fertilize the soil wherein we grow organic crops. So, what he got interested into uh, this business of compost and the uh, manure making, he, he purchased manure. Uh, say cow dung, raw cow dung from the farmers and he turned into vermicompost and he does packaging as per the standards followed for the organic production. So, he is having a big facility now what he is doing he is selling organic uh, manure, cattle manure in a very big way. So, many people are in and then he is having his own website. Can you imagine farmers are having their own websites, farmers are having own YouTube videos to popularize their product. This is what is usually done by the big companies with manufacturing companies and all uh, lifestyle products and all these things. But it is something new wherein farmers are themselves coming forward to, to make YouTube videos and to earn from YouTube business and to maximize or expand their business enterprise. So, that this one this particular farmer later on because now later on he formed a company by name Sayogi Biotech. So, so it means that you see the how gradually when this particular youth expanded his work after having an initial training from our institute and then he turned himself into big entrepreneur. Now, he is not only uh, producing this because by producing you cannot earn that much you have to diversify your portfolio by increasing your activities in that area itself. Since he developed the expertise of organic manure production for and then he also started giving training to those who want training in the area of the manure production because manure, manure production is needs some skills also how you can produce how one can produce good quality manure it requires skills. So, he, he, he gradually he learned from using the websites and browsing the website through internet. So, coming in contact with the research institutions or agriculture development institution he gathered lot of related information and developed his own capacity first how to produce and how to market this product and how to draw benefit by forming a company and then how to be a trainer. You see a person who was not having any uh, job worth doing at that time and he was not interested to take up any regular government job. He did not struggle much for finding the job, but rather he thought of establishing his own business. 
his business related to agri uh, agriculture what we call agri business and that was related to organic farming so organic farming needs bio inputs and cattle manure is one of the very important bio input to fertilize the soil and he took up it so you see another uh, another picture here see another entrepreneur is there so he is an agriculture graduate so like many agriculture graduates he would have been struggling to get job at the level and job as you know that there are highly reduced availability of jobs not many jobs are available the amount of number of youths unemployed youths looking at the, these figures so available jobs are very less so rather than see a job seeker so one can be job giver so this is another example of a successful uh, entrepreneur who has entered into organic business so he he also produce manure but he supply organic uh, manure cattle manure to the organic farmers those of whom who are the his customers so from whom he get Uh, the pro organic produce so these is con contact farmers you see the kind of facilities they have created in the rural areas so this is very good idea and then then you see i will also show you this this one this is they have named it gober gold they were the uh, veterinary science uh, final year student from one of the veterinary colleges in south india so they came for the uh, presentation about their startup idea the, under the rkbi scheme there is now the scheme so they were competing they came up with the idea how to uh, make this uh, more profit from the cow dung what they did they got it dried up they removed the moisture from the manure uh, uh, fresh cow dung they dried up when you dry up the uh, manure uh, this cow dung so what happens the bad odor which comes from the cow dung so that get goes away because you have dried up so and then dried up and then you see the you focus on his their ideas it is very creative they have creatively designed the packaging and they have creatively named this product as gober gold so what does it mean everything attracts and also they are giving 20% discount on it you know they their idea was to sell it for 99 rupees not 100 rupees you know just like bata su they came up with the idea by making it 99 rupees for 2 kg what does it mean so it is nearly 50 rupees per kg you see the farmers conventional farmers are struggling to get even 50 rupees a liter for milk but here this farmer is earning they, they this startup idea they were saying that they will charge 50 rupees a kg of for the cow dung you see the difference so if a organic farmer one he is having producing on farm cow dung and if he thinks of converting his cow dung into manure and pack it like this and sell it in the shopping mall it will his profit will be multi uh, multifold and many fold he, it will increase uh, if he is restricting himself to just selling milk and not uh, trying anything else to maximize his profit he will be conventional farmer and not having entrepreneurship in his mind if one has to be if one if one want to make agriculture profitable he has to think in the business mode not like a conventional farmer who simply grow on sell the raw product and the fresh farm produce primary produce itself so there cannot be much earning in that kind of agriculture now we have to make agriculture on a entrepreneurship mode so we have to maximize our profit and whatever possible ways by big innovative and innovating with the uh, uh, pr products by making using creative ideas and put these ideas into practice so these are the some example wherein they have made some they have done something good for them through agriculture so otherwise they would have been extreme so this is further this idea you know they they were this young these youths were they were presenting this idea at my institute and then this is the one i showed to you what they have done so this you can clearly see how nicely they have named it gober gold so you know gober generally people will shy away from it but if this kind of packaging is there and it is kept in the shopping mall it will attract the attention of the consumers or buyers they will uh, they, they will look into they will immediately think about when they will look into it what it is and when they find that it is a uh, soil fertilizing material they will immediately remember the indoor plants kept in their house they would like to fertilize their in, uh, indoor plant and uh, they they make uh, their soil healthy by using this kind of manure 
So, inside because it is kept inside the home that plant and they will not think of utilizing that raw cow dung which is available in the market in the or in the cattle side somewhere. So, but if it is put like this, it will definitely uh, have more saleability, it will attract the attention of the buyers. So, they will immediately think about fertilizing their plants because people now good take good care of their indoor plants also because they, there is increasingly more and people are doing for backyard gardening or the, these kind of indoor plants. So, for you see always keep in mind the consumers or buyers where is the potential market. One has to do a lot of research in the market what sells more, how it can be sold, what are the products are having demands in market, how we can satisfy the needs of the consumers by providing the product they need. So, that kind of a market research is a must unlike our traditional conventional farmers who used to do not lot much of the market research, they, they have been growing a particular crop or a crop cycle generation to generation for and then every time they will complain that there is not much profit in agriculture. So, but these new breed of farmers, young farmers. So, first of all agriculture does not look like a glamorous to them, they, it is not a attractive proposition. Government has come out with several schemes to attract, attract and retain youth in agriculture, but it is very difficult because they run away, they, they look for the urban life where there is more excitement and more modern amenities are available. So, agriculture look a kind of a backward and old old fashioned kind of a enterprise and it is not that is not much profit. So, but if you want to attract the youth, we have to bring a lot of newness into agriculture system and then what when I am talking of organic farming, organic farming gives an opportunity to the youth that they can do something good for themselves and they can find big opportunity for earning some money extra uh, some more money in comparison to conventional agriculture. So, now you see the another farmer I am talking about because I am giving some example of the successful organic farmers and what they are doing. So, here it is saying labeled and branded. So, labeling and branding is not very popular at the level of farmers who do conventional agriculture. They simply produce say for example, if they are growing rice, if they are growing, growing wheat or some pulses, they will, uh, they will harvest it, they will grow, they will raise it, they will harvest, they will thresh it and they will sell it to market and then it will be no value addition at their own level, no processing and they just showing. And then, then nothing, they never thought of brand naming their farm. Here you see that he has brand name his farm, Godson Organic Farm. And then also he has mentioned the label of organic logo of the government of India and also there is logo, logo of the certification agency, Uttaranchal State Organic Certification Agency. So, at that time it was there, now it is Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand State Organic Certification Agency. So, what he did, he got his farm certified, he brand named it and properly just like uh, companies, those uh, pharmaceutical companies or other companies fast moving consumer goods or like soap you might have seen all they are having some kind of brand names. So, these, these, these are not common with the farmers, but here you see this a farmer and if you look at the, the kind of a farmer, you, what kind of image you have of a farmer, it is typically sometime tension line on his head and very uh, clothes, uh, ragged clothes you know, in a very condition, very poor condition generally and then uh, farmers are not see, shown in a good esteem as if it is kind of a enterprise or it is kind of a activity which does not is no glamour and no much money into it. But the modern farmers, the coming generation of farmers, those who look are in, looking for some excitement. So, they are doing farming in a different way. This particular farmer is from the UP and then what he does, I take some time a student to show them how you can think of a business into agriculture. So, by showing them because seeing is believing when they see and interact with. So, then, then this farmer is also not going to Mandi with the product, he is having his own website. Can you imagine a farmer is having a website where he publicizes his product? So, what are the range of the product he is producing and, and these are the certified product. So, he goes online. You see online in urban population mostly now in case in China 70 percent of the uh, 
the consumers they are buying online even the restaurants they are not you if you visit any restaurant many a time you won't find many people there because most of the uh, stuff food stuff are being delivered there at home on uh, that is online and payment is also online so slowly slowly this new generation of farmers i will talk i'm talk here only about the organic farmers what they are doing they are having some kind of a consumer dedicated consumer base they keep in touch with them they keep liaison with them and then they advertise their product through online medium they will say through website that these are the range of the product which they have available they have produced in their farm it is certified organic its rates are like that all everything has been written and then the customer it could be a far away maybe thousands thousands of miles away but he will look into the website because now this is a growing trend for look for buying anything we are looking into the websites we are going looking online and then we are making online purchases if we are going on for online purchases for our clothes and shoes why not to buy online food stuffs so this uh, we we try is and all uh, pulses can be purchased and right delivered at home and then this is assured the supply and then online you are selling so you don't have to visit these places and then here your quality is assured because it is the certified product so these kind of the farmers new generation farmers so you look inside inside the how he is operating as inside so what he does so he has purchased a kind of a person where uh, this thing uh, he has removed the air from the packaging material and he has air tight he has made it air tight and then all the material he has he is doing himself rather than a conventional farmers what they do they sell it directly uh, the primary produce to the to the market or they take it to the mandi here he is not doing it to just to maximize his profit whatever middleman would get he is taking it and it is both win win situation for the consumers as well as for the producers because the middleman has been eliminated here and the farmer is able to sell it directly to the consumers so he is he is doing all this process at his home and in that process he is employing some staff also to assist him so you can look into this how this one is is it is helping the farmer most of the farmers they say that there is not much profit they are losing and the prices of the agriculture products are very low but these kind of the farmers these emerging breed of the farmer they are the startup they are the first generation farmer who are thinking a bit different way a creative way innovative way and where they are more market driven they are thinking in these lines so now you see again the kind of crop which you are uh, growing the choice of the variety he is growing so when what we saw at his farm he was growing a rice variety which were very good for making poha poha we eat it because every rice every variety of rice cannot be fit or ideal for making poha poha and then she has grown something some variety wherein you can make can be used for the poha making so he will advertise his product in that way only that it is uh, right rice for making poha so he can keep prices at his choice because there are not much competitor for this one because he has introduced this variety from some other area and he has brought in and he is innovative with respect to that he has brought some newness into this farm somebody will look that there is very low production looking and then uh, production is not worth so the production less production will be compensated by the more prices he will get for his produce because more production in agriculture not necessarily means profit sometime when you are having huge production your profit goes down also because prices go down with the more production so he is thinking so the particular day when i visited a person an indian who was living in switzerland for some years maybe 20 25 years he might have seen in swiss market lot of organic food stuff is being sold at the very high prices he got very much impressed with that one and he was having some land in india so he thought that why not to cultivate some organic product or get produce this organic uh, farm product from other farmers and to be and to for import into switzerland where he can minimize or he can man, uh, maximize his earning because he might be doing something else so organic product import and uh, marketing in switzerland it attracted uh, his interest for the interest for making more money so he visited his farm and uh, he was negotiating with him the price mechanism so you see the inside of the farmer 
it is just like a business kind of a meeting where the farmer is negotiating with the and a possible importer in the Switzerland. You see these kind of things are not happening in my area what I am giving example. This is not an isolated example. These kind of example are here and there you can find if you read the literature, if you browse the YouTube videos and you find out from the internet lot many such stories you will find. And also you will find many uh, technocrats. Uh, those who are in the software engineers after working for 15 to 20 years in the western countries in Europe and America, they come back, they, is, they, want, they are starting dairy or they are getting into agri business or by starting organic farming, organic production, but the way they will produce it will be very much different. It will not be the, will be the conventional way, what they have seen in the western country market, how the products are being marketed there, they will have this in their mind and they will try to do something very exciting which will excite the consumer, which will attract the consumer. So, these kind of the farmers you see it was, you, you see that kind of a thing, many people cannot even imagine that this is a kind of a scenario at the level of the farmer. So, this farmer is not a regular farmer, conventional farmer, he is an organic farmer and who is well educated, well versed with the standards and wherever. So, likewise I met, I visited another farmer in Andhra Pradesh a few years back. He was, he started with farming with 2 hectare land in 1980s. So, later on what happens? So, what he thought of expanding his agriculture uh, business and then he took the land in lease basis. Then he switched over, converted to organic farming from switched over uh, by following the organic standard and conversion period, he switched over to organic farming. And then again he has also brand name his product since his name is Upala Prasad Rao. So, he brand named his product UPR, UPR brand. because. In business, it is always it's better you have to have a product which is having a brand name, then you look for the popularity of the brand. Then you say it, you have to popularize your brand. Sometimes people say Tata tea and Tata salt and like that. So, likewise that why not farmers to do, do that kind of thing. So, he also brand name his product UPR. So, now he has expanded into 300 acres by taking lease and he is doing agriculture rice production and then what he is doing, he is processing the rice at his own level. So, also packing it in the this kind of a bags of the different sizes maybe 5 kg, 10 kg, 20 and 50 kg and then rather than selling it to some other sector then he is having his own shops also, he will give online delivery also. So, anyone can order him and then he need 20 kg of rice in particular city in maybe in Hyderabad, in maybe Vizawada, Bombay somewhere. So, he will, he can deliver it there itself. So, charging all money for the transportation and everything because his brand name he has made, he has worked to build the brand and the build brand and he has made his brand very popular by delivering the quality services, by quality product because after consuming the product, consumer will talk among themselves, UPR brand of rice is very good for example. Just for the sake of example, I am giving example, likewise there can be several brands. So, I am not concerned with this particular, this is for the, just for example, he is a farmer, how he started with 2 hectare land, now doing farming in 300 acres in Andhra Pradesh and he is expanding his enterprise and maximizing profit by taking up the value addition work himself rather than giving. And also he has opened a shop, Sahaja Krishi Organic. So, again he has name, given the name to the shops, generally shops have name and then he is, he is working as a farmer retailer also. So, generally what happens, farmer produce, farmer feel that my job is only to produce farm products. They never think of marketing or at least retailing. There are several intermediaries in between they pocket most of the profit. I am not talking against intermediaries. Intermediaries are also needed at the different level because everybody cannot go for direct marketing. They also helpful and they are a part of the agriculture value chain because we, the product pass through them. But many farmer can think of doing some of the work 
value adding at their own level and marketing in a creative way so that they can maximize. So, we, we are because government is also committed to doubling the income of the farmers. This is one of the way of doubling the farm income of the farmers when they will think as an entrepreneur not simply merely as a producer and producing selling producing selling not doing kind of a some kind of change in production system and some kind of value addition and thinking in a bit different way. I was talking about this particular farmer organic uh, now, he is having his very limited land, but this farmer what he has done, he has contacted some around 3000 farmers he is in touch with, he give them technical advice. Now, you see how the transformation of an agriculture graduate from job seeker to giving a job giver. So, you this always remember that it is very important rather than being a job seeker searching for the jobs here and there. If you can be job giver, this is very good. This is what entrepreneurship means. See, so what does if you ask what is entrepreneurship? It is like that you become a job giver. So, you do something of your own activity and then you give opportunity to others to get into get employed in that venture. So, what he does, he initially after doing agriculture, graduation in agriculture, he worked with some company which was de dealing with essential oils. So, what he thought that this particular company is procuring material for from the, his uh, own uh, district. In, so, the, that, country com uh, that company was based in South India and he, they were procuring this material from the North India. So, he thought that if this company can, can make business and earn out of the, the product being produced by the farmers in North India, why not to do something to organize these farmers at his own level and sell their product or export their product. So, he came up, he, he left the job after two years. In that two years, he has developed enough expertise of growing say mint crop in a certified, certified mint crop. So, he started growing it himself and then he uh, got in touch with the other growers and he gave them know how. So, likewise he, you see he made uh, this vermi compost to supply to the organic farmers, those who are mint growers. So, in, uh, in Bareilly district or in Badayu district, so uh, in Uttar Pradesh. So, this, this is his area wherein he was producing vermi compost. You know this itself is a big business selling vermi compost to the farmers because as the number of organic farmers are growing, they need bio fertilizers to fertilize the soil. So, that is also itself is a good business, but he was not selling it to many other farmers, but he was selling this vermi compost to those contact farmers who were growing mint crop for him. So, what he did? So, he started procuring mint crop from them and from from that mint crop he was extracting mint oil and that mint, mint oil was exported, he exports it to, to US and other European countries. So, you see the, uh, so you, you see his, his business model, what he does, where from he learnt it, how he acquired the skills and how he got linked with the importing, uh, importing uh, industries in the developed countries, where there was a import demand, where there was a demand for the mint oil. So, mint oil is uh, grown in India, mint is grown only in a limited, limited area in India and he is now a big exporter of the mint certified organic mint oil from India. So, I wrote, you can, you can note down from this blog, I wrote about him in 2016, when he was in the early stages of getting into entrepreneurship of organic mint oil uh, production. So, this, uh, the, this is the link. So, you can, uh, this is a small uh, blog I wrote about, uh, about his activity that was in 2016. From 2016 to now, it is almost 6, 7 years. He has grown up so much. Last year, his turnover was 50 crore rupees. Can you imagine? Had he been doing simply a job as an agriculture graduate, so he might not have been getting salary as much. But now, if you look at his establishment, that is like a very, uh, very five star kind of a facility. You see, this is, so whenever some trainees are coming to my organization for the training on organic agriculture, so I take them invariably to, to, the, to visit his, uh, his place. You see the European uh, buyers, some of them, they are visiting him regularly. They are his dedicated 
uh, buyers from him of the mint oil. This is essential oil. Now, he is expanding not uh, beyond mint oil also. So, you know, Tulsi and many other other things, chamomile, he is uh, also giving know how to the farmers. So, to grow, how to grow chamomile, you know, no, chamomile tea, you might have heard. So, he is getting it produced. So, then he is selling. So, he is a kind of a, uh, uh, he can do very good mentoring for the other entrepreneurs. So, he is very inspiring example, how a agric agriculture graduate can acquire a skill can update himself in the organic standards, can explore the market in the western countries where import importing uh, uh, import demand is there. So, these importers they also just to improve because they are so much happy with him, they got him trained into Brazil on youth leadership. He was also, his, his visit was also felicitated to Germany, there is the biggest uh, Nuremberg festival in Germany, where all big exhibition on organic product every year happens. He also visited that one. So, now in agri exhibitions, agriculture exhibitions around the, uh, India, in, 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 in India. So, you will find that he is now having his own exhibition stall, where he display his products, what he is doing. And as I told, his turnover was 50 crore rupees. So, last year or maybe before last year. So, you can see always he is trying to think expand his agriculture enterprise, agriculture business. He is agriculture graduate, even if he had not been agriculture graduate, he could have acquired skills in agriculture sector and he could have been helping. But what a nice example he is agriculture graduate, not looking for the government job, having his own venture and also helping other farmers how to grow organic cro crops organically. He is not restricting himself to uh, this mint crop or chamomile, he is also getting into cereal crops also. Wheat and rice, whatever in the certified farm where mint is being grown because that is already certified. So, any other crop which he is growing in that farm, that is automatically also because farm is automatically, farm is certified. So, it means that any other crop grown in that farm will be eligible to be for the certification of the organic. So, he is certified organic and he is able to sell his product certified organic, not only in the domestic market, he is able to export it. Export you know that export also always very helpful. Now, if you talk about the dairying sector, not only in crops, organic dairying is also getting popular slowly, slowly, not much right now, but, but there are good prospects that organic. So, in it is emerging sector. In the in the Europe and uh, other countries, lot of organic dairy products are being sold. So, what we see, what we assume, we can think of that in coming times, there will be very good market for the organic dairy products in India also, right. Uh, slowly, slowly that is coming up. So, for that what we need capacity building initiative on organic animal husbandry including mentoring startup. There are several pro programs to mentor the startups. So, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana under that, I am giving just one example, RKBI, there are several schemes, uh, Samriddhi scheme is there at my institute, so now the scheme is there. So, the, such schemes are going on in several state agricultural universities and other institutes like uh, National Institute of Management of Agriculture Extension is Hyderabad is there. So, they are mentoring the startup, they do have several programs to mentor the startup to support them to including handhold them and financial support, bank are also ready to support this kind of youth because, because we government is trying to dis discourage youth looking for the government jobs only. Now, the government is ask, uh, suggesting or giving instructions or suggesting or advice and uh, trying to convince the youth that it is far better not to look for the jobs, government job especially, but get into business and agri business because agriculture is a big sector in India. So, there is very good opportunity getting into startups uh, this one and a startup ecosystem is very good in our country currently. So, ever since that the launch make in India campaign was launched and so many things are being told. So, that we government want that we reduce our import from other countries and produce within country. So, with, with the very good quality products to be produced. So, for that a startup ecosystem, ecosystem is being improved, so that the youth can take up very agri ventures. So, so these uh, schemes of government are helping farmers and entrepreneurs to constructively engage in enterprise related to organic livestock production or any other organic agriculture product. Uh, 
uh, activity. So, the startups, the startups are making organic food more accessible and affordable to consumers while creating new opportunities for farmers by motivating them to adopt organic livestock farming practices or organic practices in general. Because lot of spices are being exported from the country, cotton is being exported, sugar is being, tea and coffee and several other products are being exported from the country and milk, milk uh, this butter oil and the cheese is being exported from the country, have, we have started exporting to the Gulf countries. So, then, then the meat sector there are opportunities. So, the agriculture institutions are making efforts to and there is one program attracting and re retaining youth in agriculture, ARIA program. So, it is being implemented by Indian Council of Agriculture Research through Krishi Vigyan Kendra. So, the Krishi Vigyan Kendra are also giving entrepreneurship training to the youth. So, rural youth is the prime target where the attention is being focused to train them in such a way that they do not run for, they, 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 they do not uh, look for job, so but rather than they start their own activity. So, what I would suggest that, so that they can, they can, they can ens enhance their capacities uh, into organic and where there is much scope, they can start several ventures related to organic. So, and then and the related to, the one is production side and, and there is production of the bio input which are to be used in organic farming. So, that is again bio fertilizer is another area wherein youth can find lucrative opportunities to making the bio pesticides, bio fertilizers, bio manures because all these are needed by the organic farmers. So, if these there is a need and there is growing demand there has to be supply. So, that supply will come from the the youths, if they are taking this enterprise mode, you think about the uh, youth which who came to our institute for a training on dairying and then he got attracted with the Burmi manure facility which we had our institute and then uh, started his own venture. Now, he is a successful uh, uh, businessman who is selling Burmi manure to the many farmers. You see the, his transformation from a youth who was not having much skill into making vermi manure, he got himself trained, he got himself skilled and transformed him to from a youth who was not having job and job even if he was having some job, he left that job, he found that there is more opportunities of he can earn more when he get into business. So, this, this, this is very important for uh, people to understand. So, these startups when I am talking of startups. They are not only organic food, but the startups are engaged in producing value added products from animal byproducts, which has an attractive market in India and has possibilities of export. This is what I am saying about the bio inputs. So, these pharma, these uh, startups are helping because taking up there because they are assessing the demand. If organic farming is going up, many people are adopting organic farming, looking at the growing demand of the organic products in the market. So, there is a growing market or the bio inputs. So, these youth can assess the market and they get into accordingly get into the ventures with to produce bio input. So, the startup including farmers engaged in organic farming and entrepreneurs need support in terms of information, technical knowledge, finance, incubation and marketing of organic animal products. So, sometime it happens they feel that even if we are getting into it, where will market, how will market, how to that, they need lot of information. Fortunately, now there are many institutions, many institutions of level which are imparting that kind of information which is needed by these startups. So, as I told a startup ecosystem currently is very good, many organizations are having programs online, offline, there are several training programs are going on to help the startups. So, this is not that earlier days a startup is not only heard in case of engineering and technology field, now startups are in every field. So, English startups in agriculture and dairying they are there. So, what I say that a startup program can transform aspiring farmers into agripreneurs uh, including in the field of animal husbandry. Since I am from the, it is an uh, organization which works for the uh, animal related work. So, I would talk that there is, is, it is also an emerging area. So, getting into organic milk, meat and egg production. So, you can, you can explore the market or the market can be developed for that one. We can attract the consumers, say new segment which is looking for the quality full products. We can attract that, we can saying that convincing. So, we will say that this certified, you know there is lot of adulteration in milk, lot of conventional milk when it is sold in market. So, people also fear that 
so it might be adulterated and something. So when we are selling certified organic milk, properly labeled, so people can be this can this gives an assurance to the farm consumers that it would be the good product. So what generally agencies and then the uh, extension services they provide that technical information to the the farmers and the youth and all the rural. Uh, population. So, extension and advisory services are help. So, what I am emphasizing this the youth can get in touch with the extension and advisory services being provided by the agriculture development institutions, because invariably all the agriculture development institution has one extension unit or state department of agriculture is having some extension unit, they do extension activity, advisory activity. They are supposed to give advice to the farmers, they can they can advise and the, then the youth can then find lot of advice related to the, the wherever they are interested and they can talk to these extension agents, so about this one. So, this example you can get inspired from looking it. So, suppose even if you have not, again I am going back to this particular farmer. So, so, you look at the, you see we are, we are the qualified people and uh, extension service providers, even then when we visit his farm, always we have something to learn. So, because the kind of the know-how he is giving to the farmers, the skill needed for going into, getting into organic agriculture, it requires certain skill. He is providing that skill to the, the, to the farmers and then how to grow it, how to harvest it how to uh, then the process it and how to how to sell it further so all it is highly specialized you know when we get into some kind of a industrial uh, work we need lot of technical uh, support and lot of uh, mentoring a lot of uh, degree and diploma and all why we take agriculture that it doesn't require that kind of a skill training and all so this is very important and then when we are talking of organic it requires more of that kind of a skill so you 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 see that if he is doing this business of vermi manure and selling it, he is employing many people into that venture. You see all these rural youth, so the rural people, they are involved in production of vermi compost. So, vermi compost, he is giving employment to several other because of his ventures. So, you know all these uh, drums were in storing the uh, mint oil and for the taking to market and all. This is creating opportunity for many others into this one. See, it is not, then the farmers are got, getting also skilled in doing the things. I told about this farmer how brand name helps, so and the how he, he can be retailer, why only to be producer and struggle with the production also. So, we have to we have to we have to learn from this kind of a inspiring examples. So, there are some few uh, inspiring example and of the entrepreneurship and the startups, how they started, how they help themselves and also help others by giving employment through the acti activities related to organic farming. So, organic farming offers very good opportunity for the youth in particular to get into business activity related to some segment and maybe it is a production, maybe you can get united in the cluster form with we can have several other rural youth with them because all alone if you cannot do, you can get united with other for young farmers in your area and convince the elders in the, uh, in the home that you can you want to venture into this one and you can get yourself skilled into and not only on the production, primary production of the farm produce, also you can get into uh, the, in the value, other other activities in the value chain, organic value chain, you can get involved. So you can get involved yourself in the processing. You can get involved yourself in production of the inputs required in the organic farming. So you have to, you you can wherever you can find opportunity, you can take up that as a startup, or you can all together say, for example, new product you can you can think of, which can help boost productivity in organic farming. So we can help fertilize soil in organic ways. So, since chemicals are not used in organic farming, so you have to look and if you can provide an organic alternative as a input, so that you can earn a lot of money. Because right now when we are saying no to chemicals in organic agriculture, so we have to, able to, we have to be able to say yes to the alternative to the chemicals. Right now many alternatives are not available, biofertilizers are also very limited. If we can evolve, we can develop through our startup activity for there is support available from the government and other agencies and incubation facilities also available in several agriculture research institutions. Agriculture development organization, they are having incubation facilities where you can incubate your idea. If you are having 
some kind of a dairy which is organic dairying. If you need if you need support how to develop organic dairy, how to market that product. So, that kind of a support is also available. So, recently at my institutions, somebody submitted the proposal about the dairy. So, then the modern dairy. So, that that is being incubated and she will be supported how she can go in an innovative way, creative way, how he can value at the product and then he, he, how she can make multiple products out of this milk. So, rather than selling raw milk as such, of course, raw milk is having a market, but if you value at that and make product, several product out of milk, so you can maximize your profit. So, that is a startup ecosystem as I told it is very good. So, you can get very good support from the different agencies. You look for the agencies which are giving very good support to the youth or the entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship development is in the, very, in the top agenda of the government. So, it is being promoted in a very big way everywhere. So, different organizations have been told to youth to give them and the possibly handhold them also, so that they get into business rather than looking for a job. So, job and there is that jobs are very limited, very restricted. So, start off we are doing, so maybe who knows, so you never know that to what extent you can be successful, how much you can expand your business. So, you think about this one. So, there are opportunities available and you have to harvest these opportunities, how much you can go, there is, a, there is, there is no end to it. So, you can, you, you can, you can have unlimited success. So, you always think in terms of brand naming your farm. So, you have to have a brand name of your farm. So, and then I was talking of another farmer. So, then they, this, these farmers, all of them, they are having some kind of brand name. Say, he has this particular farmer, he has uh, formed the company Pavitra Minthi Limited. So, if you browse the website, excellent videos you will find of his, uh, now he is a company. So, this, so, now he is having two, three companies in his name and he is uh, running different uh, activities. So, Pavitra Minthi, you can website, you can browse, you can yourself see that how an agriculture graduate has transformed him to and you will find several YouTube videos. Likewise, there are many success stories of the farmers from the different quarter corners of the country. We should learn from them. You can, we can get inspired and we can start our own activity by, by doing so. Then we can, we can be, after listening to the stories, we can ourselves get into this kind of activity and then we can improve our portfolio of income and rather than job seeker, we can get job seeker. So, what I believe that what I said so far to you, what I try to convince you that there is worth trying to be startup and then get into agribusiness to be entrepreneur rather than seeking job. So, organic farming opportunity offers excellent opportunity to be in a startup or as in a startup and to grow into entrepreneur and we can earn beautifully and handsomely through organic agriculture. Towards the end of this lecture, I want to Again, refresh your memory talking about startups, how they are getting into organic agriculture field, including organic milk production and organic uh, dairying. Now, there are agencies which can give you advice. So, like many agriculture research institutions now having agri business incubation cell by the youth. So, then, uh, then this, this facility was not. Uh, Many youth are taking advantage of such incubation facilities. They are getting into organic agribusiness. So, by making uh, inputs for the organic production and also selling the produce, certified organic produce, not only within the country, they are also exporting it to other countries also. So, I gave example of the mint, mint uh, grower, processor and exporter and then he is supporting 3000 3, farmers from whom he is getting raw material, this uh, uh, mint oil, which he is processing and it is uh, packing it fit for the export, because export has certain requirements and the individual small scale farmers may not have that much expertise to how to export the product and he has acquired that skill, because he has been uh, shortly worked with some company, which was into agribusiness uh, of the export of the uh, essential oils. So, the, you the, the learn from it. And then you see another example I gave how this youth, they came up with the idea of uh, this kind of a, this gober gold kind of thing. So, they, this, this is a, a startup idea they had and we, 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 are, we are ready to support them in venture under another scheme of uh, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. You, you can, you can uh, draw lessons, you know, uh, and again another thing I told about the 
uh, got some organic farm. So, how farmers are now slowly, slowly getting into just like a uh, pharma or other companies who are having brand name. So, farmers are also brand naming their, uh, their product and their farms. So, so that they, they develop a brand identity of their products. So, you see that they are how uh, they what they are taking up many other activities in the value chain. So, rather than selling directly the raw produce, they are processing it, packing it, labeling it with their brand name and then, then say they are selling it to market. They are growing the product which are in demand in the market. They are not just, they are also making market assessment what kind of a product they can sell, where, where they can earn their profit. More production does not mean profit, it is creative production and some kind of a innovative production and innovative way of marketing that gives you more earning. So, now these young uh, entrepreneurs, agripreneurs, they are learning these skills not only about the production skills, they are also having the marketing skill and they are developing market links, links and they are also producing inputs for the organic uh, required for the organic farming. So, I gave the example of the some farmers, those who are not only farming at their own level, but also helping other farmers who are supplying to them their produce, which they are processing and exporting to outside country. These, these are some of the wonderful example. So, of the startups, how they could expand their agribusiness by using their skills, by availing the government scheme, whatever it was available, by making themselves aware and knowledgeable, they could harvest the benefit from the organic ventures. So, the what I would say that a startup ecosystem, again I am emphasizing, one should capitalize on, cash upon the opportunity available for the startups in agriculture sector. Now, there are several institutions which are giving training, they are supporting, hand holding and banks are also ready to support them financially. So, these startups are able to help, so modernize agriculture sector. Agriculture sector is need to be modernized, new generation of the farmers, they will have new skills, not only production, but they will also need to have skills in processing and packaging and the marketing of the product. So, along the value, agriculture value chain, they have to have the supply chain, they have to take up jobs in the supply chain as a startup as a entrepreneurs and they have to develop themselves as a business, agribusiness person. So, if there, there are a lot of opportunities, so I, I finally want to say that, so what I said, so from that you draw lessons and then you try to develop your, your activity and you bring that activity in the business mode. So, in the farming families, old generation people, so they may not catch up this idea, this new idea, they may resist because they have been doing something for the long time, but the youth rural youth, those who are from the agriculture business family, agri agriculture families, they can turn their agriculture activity into business activity. So, then if they are not, they cannot do it successfully alone, they can get join hands with other youth in the villages itself and they can start in jointly. So, as a group, they can succeed if not individually. So, I thank you finally for listening this lecture and I, I believe that it will benefit you. Thank you.